Yes, what do we have here? This is the thing and the Scarlet Witch. Power Man and Son of Satan. Son of Satan. Now they're yes. getting kind of blatant. And this is the Burning Hand. Now in the Burning Hand, we have a depiction of Jesus Christ crucified on a pentagram of five-pointed occultic star. Unbelievable. That is the, the star of Satan. The five-sided star is a pentagram, and it represents the goat's head. And here it actually, do you see the direction that the cartoons are going in the comic books? They're showing Jesus Christ as defeated and crucified by the occultic powers. I, I, just, I just can't believe this. It, it is phenomenally blatant, and it is affecting children today. Well, what else do we have on these occultic uh, comic well, books? Well, we're, we're starting to see violence within the toy series in a greater and greater way. Masters of the Universe averages 37 violent acts every half hour. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons averages 67 violent acts every half hour. And then there's the granddaddy on Mars, G.I. Joe, and which is also matched by Transformers, which does over 80 violent acts every half hour. And in that, we compare that to a very violent adult television show, which averages four to six violent acts every half hour, and a cartoon like Bugs Bunny Roadrunner, which averaged about 11 violent acts. I would like to say also that in the Bible, God says that he cast Lucifer, Satan, out of heaven because he was so filled with violence. And we know that in Hosea 4.2 it says, There is swearing, deception, murder, stealing, and adultery. They employ violence so that bloodshed follows bloodshed. I was absolutely amazed recently when I went into the toy stores and I saw that there were complete racks filled with grenades, uh, rocket launchers, all kinds of knives and guns and, uh, I mean, squirt guns that uh, are so occultic in that, are not occultic, but violent in that they depict real firearms used in wars. And I thought we would start today by showing you a clip from G.I. Joe. So let's go into uh, like a, a commercial of a G.I. Joe, Joe, Joe toy series. Now, I know. Until now, it was that easy. But now it's gonna get real hard. Cobra's hired evil twin brothers, leaders of the Crimson Guard. Introducing the leaders of the Crimson Guard, the evil twin brothers, Tomax and Sabot. And they're getting away in the Cobra Ferret. The Joes will stop them. With the G.I. Joe mini G.I. Joe! Oh, evil twin brothers sold together. Cobra Ferret, G.I. Joe mini tank, and Joe Bigger sold separately from Hasbro. Oh! the exciting adventures of the Joe team five days a week as they battle the evil forces of Cobra. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's the most exciting... Well, Phil, as we're watching these G.I. Joe commercials, can we say that they're also helping sell toys and even cereal? Oh, yeah, the, the cartoons and the commercials are helping selling the toys and the cereal. I think we ought to show the toy to start out today uh, you know, G.I. Joe years ago used to be a guy that wore khakis and uh, was just sort of a soldier, but now he's taken on an occultic look, hasn't he? Yeah, they're slowly but surely weaving in the occult and mainly in the, in the martial arts and different things like that within G.I. Joe. Sort of a futuristic look as we see on this uh, figure on our monitor here. Uh, he's taking on the look of the future soldier, so yes, to speak. very much And so. a lot of the movies are depicting that, too. I see a real trend toward uh, what I call the barbarization of our children, where through, uh, through these violent movies and violent cartoons, they're teaching our children that the way to handle problems is through violence. And now, also the violence is helping sell cereal, correct? Right. And here we have a G.I. Joe cereal uh, box. And what we're really concerned about is not selling cereal, though. We're concerned about the trend towards teaching the children to have violent attitudes. Oh, yes. And, and we see things such as flat gum, you know, that look like shrapnel coming what, what, out. Now, wait a minute. Flat gum. Yeah, it's, it comes in a pouch, and it looks like pieces of shrapnel. Uh, in fact, one, I was listening to one uh, commentator talk about the feelings within Russia, and he said that the Russians were, were more upset about this new trend in America, the children wearing the fatigues and being more militaristically minded than they were about our nuclear arms. 
You're kidding me. Yeah, very much so. In other words, this is a threat to Russia because they see our children being programmed to want to carry guns around and to shoot people and to rocket launch and so forth. And that's what bothered me as I went through the toy stores, seeing that parents were buying all of these occultic toys from grenades to gum that you chew that's uh, supposed to be shrapnel that... Uh, yeah. Now, here's a uh, Rambo gun that we picked up at one of the stores. And, of course, Rambo is an extremely popular movie. But this is a squirt gun that's battery operated and squirts 30 feet. But that's not so bad. It's just the children get the feeling that guns are in now, that yeah. uh, shooting people is in. Oh, they really are. And, and, uh, and Rambo and other movies like this have glorified violence. And, and the hero never gets hurt. I mean, he's hardly ever even scathed. You know, it's, it doesn't give a real picture of war. And people say, well, the Bible is a violent book. But if you look at the Bible, the violence took place over hundreds of years, not, not such in a compacted 90-minute package with thousands of acts of violence or a compacted 30-minute cartoon with 80 violent acts on the half hour. Well, I think, Phil, as we're looking at this, we're seeing a trend that is leading towards what we now call uh, our transformer toys, which transform from uh, uh, a, a weapon to a robot type of creature. Right. And we're going to get into talking about robots and transformers, but let's talk about some of the more innocuous things that are on the market that are leading into these things. Uh, I mean, what could we call uh, something like Smurfs? Is there anything occultic or dangerous about Smurfs? Well, Smurfs happens to be the most popular Saturday morning cartoon since the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner hour. It came. It's just entered into uh, uh, a long-term run, and it's hit an hour and a half on Saturday morning cartoon. But there are some things about Smurfs that we need to look at. First of all, you'll notice that they're depicted as blue with black lips. Well, isn't that interesting? And you know what happens to you when you die? You turn blue and your lips turn black. In other words, these are depictive of uh, dead creatures. Right. And another thing is that Smurfs is an all-male community. And you say, oh, there's Smurfette. She's a female. Well, in one cartoon, she was depicted as transforming from a male to a female through magical power. And so the only female in the Smurfs is transformed from a male. She was not born a female. No, what you're telling me then is that even Smurfs carry a homosexual connotation in that most of them are male. I believe so. But we're, we're not going to blatantly say that Smurfs are evil. We're just saying that they have all of these overtones that are leading that direction. Well, let's take another look at Smurfs. Because the Smurfs cartoon, the whole uh, storyline, is that the Smurfs get in trouble. And every time they get in trouble, they run to Papa Smurf, who whips up a spell or an incantation to get them out. In fact, he said the name Beelzebub a no numerous times in the cartoon. And he whips up this spell, spell or incantation and, and draws them out of their problems You're through kidding. witchcraft. And then they have an enemy called Gargamel. Now, Gargamel, in a recent episode, I saw him draw a five-pointed star, the pentagram, on the ground. Right. He lit candles at each point, which is an actual witchcraft practice. He started to dance inside the pentagram, chanting a magical chant. At that point, a book opened up across the room, and something left the book and entered his physical body, giving him power to levitate and to to do battle against the Smurfs. Oh, no. So, so we can say that Smurfs has gone occultic. Very much so. Well, how about something innocuous like uh, the Care Bears? Aren't they very popular? Well, Care Bears is very popular. And it, it was started by Hallmark Cards as a very innocent thing. And then they've licensed out. And some things have taken place in Care Bears that need to be talked about. And one of those things took place in the Care Bear movie. If we could look at some slides of the Care Bears, maybe we could uh, get an idea of what we're talking about.